The cops leave. We give a speech to the people that we organize the community going to patrol these racist police out here. They've been brutalizing our people in the community, etc. Now, we're about what? At best, March. We started the party in October. Four or five months old. At that time, we've been patrolling police with legal guns, law books, tape recorders. The bad show six that night, when he attempted to do that, he almost got killed. But just because we were disciplined in the methodology is the reason. Because it was not emotionalism so much as we were trying to capture the imagination of the people. Like the best of a jazz quartet, fusing their creativity, allowing their sophisticated voices to bounce off against one another, mediated with respect in such a way that it could deal with the unpredictable precisely because they're so disciplined. Let them see some disciplined people, young black men in our community. Why well, living in Trenchtown, you know, um, as a young man, surviving was easy. The only thing you'd have to really look out for was the police, you know. Got the police could have just get you, frame you, you go to prison, and because you come from Trenchtown, you know, Trenchtown's a from them say, where you from? It's a Trenchtown, you're gone. Ready to defend ourselves. I love that. Ever ready. Your rightness is all. You got to be ready every minute. Be prepared. Be disciplined. Put on your armor. What kind of stand are you willing to take? And it goes far beyond politics. This is assertion of humanity. This is Dublin politics. I don't know what that is. This is stand up and talk for my rights. I know what that is. See? And I don't care who the guy is. Because my right is my right, like my life. You know, all I have is my life. Believe in yourself and hey, the black people in America must go to self, clean up self, help self, do for self. I feel like black people shall develop themselves, you know, not in a, not not to several then just developing up yourself having a prejudice thing to it. It's just that we are people with our own history and culture. We can educate ourselves. I mean, we are the first creators. So we have to really, everything we see on this earth here, yeah, the black man make it. And, I, and I'm saying that the white man don't make some, but all wisdom come from the black man. Right now, I don't see nothing being done, but I am doing something. See? Because I see the exploitation, the exploitatory system that is designed to destroy. Self-reliance and self-trust. He said, one thing I learned. Poverty was designed and designated by bureaucrats and the politician and leaders of churches and states. Christianity is one of the uh, real causes of most of the uh, condition that black people in this country uh, are confronted with. It's the religious concept that Christianity has given this country that makes us almost incapable of solving our own problems. Uh, the black man in this country has a different religious concept when he's a Christian than the white man has. If you notice, the black man is the only one who will turn the other cheek uh, to his enemy or who will love his enemy or who will pray for those who use him just because he thinks that's what Jesus wants him to do. Now, the white man preaches the same thing, but he doesn't practice it. To see to it that the rest of man stay in the category of poverty and want and the needs so he will break down and start to commit crime. But then again, when I look around me in Trench Town, all I see was poor, ambitious people. had the ambition and the integrity and the divine qualities sometimes and dignity of a millionaire. I learned to fall back on myself. I came from a poor family who financially wasn't capable to give me a proper schooling. education in no level, but at the same time, my ambition and determination, my hopes and aspiration, and my inner concept of creativity that was born in me 
showed me to help myself, and I did. So he became what? A fearless human being, a fearless black man, a bold black man, believing in impossibility even, based on sheer will, sheer decision, sheer commitment. Nobody else can do this for us. But as it was designed by Jah, who is my creator, who sent me here to help to alleviate the shit still, the dirt, the filth and corruption that my people have been inoculated with. my duty to teach those who will learn. If the Negro is to be free, he must move down into the inner resources of his own soul and sign with a pen and ink of self-assertive manhood his own emancipation proclamation. To start from within to rebuild our original greatness, right? right. Okay, well that's what my mother did, you know what I'm saying? And I'm listening about freedom fighters and strugglers. Well, you got to understand that when, when it was in to have a gun and to be in the street, my mother gave that up to be in a house and wash the dishes, you know what I'm saying? And feed us and put the thoughts in our brains, you know what I'm saying? Because we didn't get any of that history from all of those soldiers that we lost. We got none of that. They all went to jail, if you can remember. They all went to penitentiaries. They put Moses in jail. They put Daniel in jail. Why, you haven't got a man of God in the Bible that wasn't put to jail when they started speaking out against exploitation and oppression. We didn't see none of that knowledge. If it was not for my mother who stayed home and didn't go out and do all that, then I wouldn't have had shit. Excuse my language. But I wouldn't have been nowhere. And we have never slowed up and said, thank you, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And until we do that, until we're able to do that, but that black woman went through racist white system and sexist black me. And we ain't never said what you've been through. And in spite of that, in spite of that. Respect the women and my people. All men should respect the women because a man's woman is the field which produces nation. If you don't protect this field, it produces a bad nation. This is emphasis that we the black people have to put on our women because our women are the most abused, the most misused, the most prostituted, the freest to walk the streets, frequent in and borrowed in a strange man that like fathers, all type fatherless babies of all kinds in the houses. And as long as we don't respect to protect our women, we don't respect ourselves because our first lesson comes from one, our first nurse is a woman, our mother's our first teacher. You don't respect to protect your mother, you'll never be nothing. Y'all crazy? What is this about? And then black men, as you run off the wall, and kill folks, liberate folks, and then come home in a white cop or a white racist mentality, then shot your mama in the back, and you got to call him. I've been brutalized by police, not because they know that I am a criminal I, or I'm doing subversive things within the society, but they know that I speak the truth, and the truth is destructive to the functioning of life and corruption. You don't call the United States government. You don't call that bad army. And black men, how? Learn this, because when Columbus and Henry Morgan and Francis Drake come on you, and I call them pirates and put them in a reading book and give us observation that we must look at and live the life and the principle of pirates to the youth. Them now fire up them gun like Henry Morgan, see you here. Some reason or another, the man them who project the, the, the revolutionary vibes without compromise is the man them who always fights against murder. <laughs> So, you know what I mean, I said, go. It just, is it them things that come through sabotage and through pressure? I and I have to set up this country here and eliminate all those shit to them. That black poor people don't live in confusion. Because hungry people are angry people. So right now, if the government just come together and say, right now, if we want to build this country and build the people, them. Because right now, you can't build the country and don't build the people. 
people suffering from malnutrition and all them things there. And just a shit them that lay down to be little the poor. You know what I'm saying? It's only the poor go to jail. Every time he go in a jail, it's a poor man. A few poor people have seen that. Sir Ascla, they go a photo out and full of poor people. So, them that shit them, they have to change. See? Every law is illegal. Every government upon the face of this earth today is illegal. Not one of them is legal. And nobody has said, hey, somewhere we got to apologize. First, the black women. I saw on the television where they took this black woman and knocked her right down on the ground, dragging her down the street. You saw it. You're trying to pretend like you didn't see it because you knew you should have done something about it and didn't. Can you let cops shoot your mama, your dad, and your daughter in the back and don't do nothing, but you notice they never shot your car. They never took a nightstick and knocked your headlines out. And black men, you should feel ashamed that you think more of your car than you do your mama, than you do your daddy. Huh? These are the things that need to change. Hear me. And we tolerate it. Now, let me say this. Number one, I have a wife and she's walking around with a skirt up to here. And then what's happening? Well, why do I want everybody to see her? What's the man? I mean, people looking and winking, they lusting for her, all kind of freaks and, and no good people on the streets. Why do I want my wife? She came bent over because the panties show off, the wind blow. Well, my heart is showing the behind. Cows and animals and mules. Human beings don't walk around out. Savages walk around with their behinds out. And my wife's behind ain't for every man to look at. You understand, sir? It makes a lot of sense. So how can I protect my woman if I'm walking down the street, she's half naked and some saddest run up and grab her? Hell, I shouldn't have put out there. If I got merchandise I want to sell, I put, on the, put it in the window for you to see. So if I want my wife, why don't I want everybody to see my wife? What's private? What's mine? Everybody looking at her. What do you mean what's wrong with it? How can you have a wife or somebody you love? Anything God made precious, he, nature hides it. You cannot find diamonds easy. You have to dig and dig and dig. Then you got to work to clean them. You cannot, <coughs> you, you cannot find, listen, you cannot find gold. Everything God made valuable, he made it hard to get. Pearls, rubies, uh, and ain't my oil. You have to dig and have time you don't strike. Everything God created that was valuable, he made it hard to get to. Ain't my woman more important than some diamonds and some oil and some gold when she's the field which produced my sons and daughters? Why should she walk around all nude in all of these design clothes? Her breasts is out. These are savages. I, I'm going to have my daughter, my wife, and my woman walk around for her, man. Ooh, look, I could do. Boy, if I could get to her. And this, uh, what I want that for? She's mine. What do you mean, what's wrong with walking around half naked? That don't look bad to you because you're of the European nature, and the black people are righteous. And the Europeans have made them but, unrighteous. But, but, no, that's because, because your nature no, is not no, righteous. No. You understand? They're clean. They serve God, Allah. They don't serve some English clothes designer. They serve God, and they're proud of it. And what's wrong with that? You ask what's wrong with a miniskirt? What's wrong with that? That is nothing what man that. wouldn't want his woman covered up? He can go to work knowing that she's somewhere, some man chasing down the street for a behind part. What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with it. Nothing. No. no. So there's just... something wrong with that, though, showing no, it all. I don't think there's anything you wrong with it. You don't think there's anything wrong with it? No, not at all. You don't. No. Not at all. Your nature is not righteous. Let me, let me, let How do you mean my nature your is not nature righteous? Is not, you said you don't mind your woman walking around half naked. You're, make, you're making some incredible assumptions about me. You tell me, me you don't, yeah, it's the truth. You're telling the world on television. Have you got the priority on the truth? Yes. You know the truth more the than truth, I do? The truth is that you don't mind your woman walking around half nude. Sure, sure. You don't mind it? No, of course well, not. Well, then the that means you're not righteous. But look, look let, me, let me put a point to you. Half nude? Let me put a point to you. And you're a Christian, too? Let, let me put a... No, Christianity I'm, shouldn't be back there. I'm in there. fact a non-believer, if it comes to that. Oh, well, now I understand why, then, right. you're a non-believer. No, I'm not sorry. At all. Not at all. I'm sorry, you're not a non-believer. You can't say just if because If you're a non-believing God, then I understand why you don't care about I believe in my I believe in my own kind of God, well, like good. a lot of people do. Right. I believe in some God kind of being. God created man in his own image, but well, you make so, God in your own likeness. It's all irrespective of what men want to invent or try to imitate God. They cannot create, <laughs> you know, see... They're only trying to invent and researching and discovering destruction. But, you know, so it was, so shall it be. And these are the last days. How long? How long? How long? How long? Two forever on the scaffold, one forever on the throne. Yes, sir. Yet that scaffold sways the future. Yes, Behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow, keeping watch above his own. How long? Not long. Because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards us. Yes, I don't know who I'm influencing. 
until they themselves stand up. Oh, when I hear them brothers hollering like that, whoo, I'm going to get my soul and my spirit. I'm going to fight for the prestige, not for me, but to uplift my little brothers who are sleeping in concrete floors today in America. Black people who are living on welfare. Black people who can't eat. Black people who don't know no knowledge of themselves. Black people who don't have no future. I want to win my title and walk down the alleys, settle on the garbage can with the wine heads. I want to walk down the street with the dope addicts, talk to the prostitutes, so I can help a lot of people. These things are the things that I bomb talk about. And when I get so fucking upset, I don't bother blood clot talk English bomb clot grammar. Because them things that get me very bomb clot upset. See? And all because, you know why? I am not singing, darling, I blood clot, love you, and come shake my rask, and I'll swim the ocean and climb the mountain. <laughs> See? And that not going to change me. See? Because I am going to kill the fuckery out there. And people is going to be in demand for the truth. People is sick and tired of hearing bumbo clot, get down, shake your fucking booty. See? People is sick and tired of hearing, darling, I blood clot, love you. You turn on the fucking radio 24 bumbo clot hours a day. You hear, darling, I love you. A man singing, a man wouldn't sing to the almighty ass clot. Him love him woman more than the creator who created the sun, the moon, and the bumbo clot star. I sick and tired of hearing that bumbo blood clot. Sing. You understand? We got to get our brothers from the street like Harriet Tubman did. Why can't we look at that and see exactly what she was doing? Like Malcolm did, the real Malcolm, before the nation of Islam. You got to remember this was a pimp. You know what I'm saying? The push and all that. We forgot about all of that. I know, because I, I, I went into the movement with more negative tendencies than anybody in the movement. I was an extreme delinquent. And just faith in what I was taught. I mean, not more than proof. <laughs> What made it possible for me to stop doing anything that I was doing and everything that I was doing. And I strive to be enlightened. We forgot about all our brothers in the street, right. about all our dope dealers, our pushers and our pets. Right. And that's who's teaching the new generation. That's right. Because right. y'all not doing it. Right. I'm sorry, but it's the pets and the pushers who's teaching us. So if you got a problem with how we was raised, it's because they were the only ones who could do it. They the only ones who did. While everybody else wanted to go to college and, you know, yeah, everything has changed. They was the ones that were telling you the white man ain't shit. Here you go. Check this out, young blood. Nobody else did that. So I don't want to hear shit about nobody telling me who I can't love and respect until you start doing what they did. You understand what I'm saying? I don't have to be what you want me to be. I'm free to be what I want to be and think what I want to think, right? I to be fair. Now let me tell you the truth about it. The truth has been branded outlawed and illegal. It is dangerous to have the truth in your possession. You can be found guilty and sentenced to death. The whole thing again is to really check out the truth. And don't make fallism. Don't make it check it out. And don't get too busy that you can't check out the truth. Because the truth is there. Let's not be dishonest in acknowledging what's going on here. A change is taking place. A fundamental quest for truth. But an acknowledgement when you come to talking about truth in the black context. Most people don't want to hear I talk because lightning will gash out of the heavens and guys jump out and shoes. The claim is that the condition of truth is to allow suffering to speak and watch how he transformed the suffering and the moans and groans of a downtrodden people and pro produces such dignity and elegance. But truth is a big word. I have a poem on truth. It says, the face of truth is open. The eyes of truth are bright. The lips of truth are never closed. The head of truth is upright. The breast of truth stands forward. The gaze of truth is straight. Truth has neither fear nor doubt. Truth has patience to wait. 
the words of truth are touching, the voice of truth is deep, the law of truth is simple, all you sow you reap. The soul of truth is flaming, the heart of truth is warm, the mind of truth is clear and firm through rain and storm. Facts are only its shadow. Truth stands above all sin. Great be the battle of life. Truth in the end shall win. The image of truth is Muhammad. Wisdom's message is Rod. The sign of truth is the crescent. And the soul of truth is God. Life of truth is eternal. Immortal is its past. Power of truth shall endure. Truth shall hold to the last. So as long as you represent truth, brother, you might be losing, it might look stormy, but in the end, you have to win. But now we have those who are still willing to build on the best of the quest for truth and say, you know what? It's only the truth that can make a man free. It's only the truth that can make a man live. Because I know difference. Why I can't go here? Why I can't listen to this? Well, what is it to this? It makes me check it more. There's a trick, you know. Um, the way them do it is that the first thing them start, you know, is let a black man start a movie. See? Let a black man start a movie. Plenty of youth want to be a movie star right away. So, and then, differently, they will make a black man be a mayor. They will make a black man be an um, ambassador. So all of these things, you know, Gonna cool out the fire. The bill and burning, the bill and burning, the bill and burning. They have no water. You know what I mean? Cause you know Babylon is a system that tell people they must die. And then when I investigated the fact, I found out that this black heart man was the Rasta man, the man of peace, the man of love and tranquility within his heart, the man that teaches good to his people, teach them to love each other. And then born and outgrowing, there was a certain amount of consciousness in the eye self that you know it was always a lonely world not finding people who might think like me you know yeah not to, not, not not to say that i think so different but because of this consciousness about god and the people who come from is more christian you know we always try to do like try stand up not right but what we used to find out now that one church quarreling against the next church and I figure I never want any of that, you know. I never want really enter any thing where this one I fight against that one and everybody talking about God still. So after going on and going on and coming up, you know, the the, the thing that was there get more stronger, come to Kingston, meet some more people, them people is Rasta. You talk to them and find out it's the same thing we have inside. It's the same thing. I find out that the same thing where I deal with the same thing where the Rasta man talk about. So that is how I could identify myself as a Rasta. Rasta is involved in progress. May I bring me in debt to black and white oppression? Yes, the quest for truth is in fact uninhibited. The conversation must go on. That's why. To me, this is Mecca. You know what I'm saying? This is the black family I see it here. But what makes it even that much more sad and what makes me want to cry is because as soon as I leave, leave here, so does America. Right. You understand what I'm saying? We're going back to the real deal. Right out there, you're going to see them same sisters and Brenda. They right out there. And y'all going to get in y'all cars and drive the fuck home. You know what I'm saying? I'm I apologize. But check this out. You can't be no more offended by my curses than what's really going on. That's real. That's real, y'all. That's real. Y'all got to be truthful. You got to be truthful. Because you letting the media and the white man cut us off. You let them tell you that the rappers ain't real and, and you know you got to either be, you know, the intelligent person or 
you're a gut person. We all the same. We all feel it like y'all feel it. I just can't hold a straight face when I see it. Right. It's the proof that we can't be together. The young black male is the future of us. And the young black kid is the future of us. It's going to be what you put into it. So if you don't put shit into it, don't be mad and blow up. It's not going to stop. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to stop until we stop it. Right. And it's not just white men that's doing this to Brenda, right. and it's not just white men that's keeping us trapped. Right. It's black. Right. You know what I'm saying? We have to find a new African in everybody, in all of us. Because if we keep running around looking for black and who got the most colors on and who got the baddest dashiki on, we still going to get, excuse my language, fucked. We can't chill out. No, we, it ain't time to cool out and banquets and all that. Right. It's still on. It's on just like it was on when you was young, and you want to say fuck that just like you said fuck that back then. So how come now that I'm 20 years old ready to start some shit up, everybody telling me to calm down? You know, don't curse, go to school, go to college. Well, fuck that. You know, we had colleges for a while now. You know what I'm saying? And it's still Brenda's out there, and niggas is still trapped. My mother right now is going through, um, dra you know, she has to get clean. This is somebody who I watched travel the whole country, you know what I'm saying, during a time when women were scared to speak up. For the Black Panthers. She spoke in Harvard, Yale, everywhere. And now, I see my mother as, as what really going on. You know what I'm saying? And I don't see no big parades around my mother now. And she done got a dozen fucking awards. And I don't see nobody there. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? So about all this, I take that lightly. I take all this lightly. What I want you to take seriously is what we have to do for the youth. I see many people, many youths in general, become victims of the shit stick. I see them die, I hear them cry. Oh, the pain, the agony they bear. Many I see die because of impatience. I see many get frustrated, hallucinated, kinky, crack, nuts, crazy out of themselves, lost in the fantasy seeking to find the reality. And I see myself in the same similar situation. Well, I have to be a reminder that we're coming up in a totally different world. This is not the same world that you had. This is not the 60s. This is not that. We, you grew up. We grew up. BC. Before crack. That should say it all. You understand what I'm saying? We did not grow up without parents. You had parents that told you this and that, and this is what went on back in the day. Now you don't have that. You have young kids, 14, coming home, their mama is smoking out or doing it to their best friend to get the product. You understand what I'm saying? So that means that it's not just about you taking care of your child, it's about you taking care of these children. It bothers me that I have to sidestep my youth. To, to stand up and do some shit that somebody else is supposed to be doing. Right. You understand what I'm saying? There's too many men out here for me to be doing it. Because it ain't my turn yet. I'm right. supposed to be following behind him getting the knowledge. Right. I don't even got a chance to get the fucking knowledge. I can't go to college. There's too much problems out here. I don't got the money. Nobody do. You understand what I'm saying? So what I'm saying is it's not as easy as we mapping it out to be. And we got to stay real. We got to stay real. Before we can be New African, we got to be black first. Right. When my mother and father was the basis, on building the foundation for me to accept truth when I did hear it because what they taught me the truth as far as their knowledge would allow it and after accepting the higher truth I accepted it so they were the basis of this type of thinking now let me say this all these things are politically motivated through the churches and the shit stem seen because all of them sit down and watch these things upsurge and say nothing so I know these are their friends. As I say, the devil comes in all many different disguises to destroy the world. And they've been doing what they've been doing. And the only way to make people's mind change and think otherwise from morally is to get these things in your head. We all used to go to church. We don't go to church anymore. We went to church to search. See, and know that we found what was reality and righteousness. When you have a philosophy or a gospel, I don't care whether it's a religious gospel, a political gospel, an economic gospel, or a social gospel. If it's not going to do something for you and me right here, right now, to hell with that gospel. And this new appraisal and new approach has to be in tune with the reality of the conditions that we are in 
after having been thoroughly brainwashed. And when black people in this country uh, uh, come out from under the mental straitjacket that the Negro clergymen have placed them in, and begin to see that the only way you can get freedom is to get it the same way the white man in this country got it. He was willing to pay the price for freedom. When, when you're willing to pay the price for freedom, then you'll get it. But the Negro in this country has never been willing to pay the price for his freedom. All of the price that we've been paying in the past has been uh, freedom for the white man. We fought abroad so that the white man in America could be free today to sick police dogs on us, to beat our people in the heads with, with police clubs, and to turn water holes on, on little women and children and babies simply because they want to walk down the street like decent human beings. That's now the only way you can have peace is to eliminate those injustices, and the American white man is not going to eliminate them. He's going to talk that pretty talk, but he'll still continue to practice those inhuman deeds. Anytime you beg another man to set you free, you will never be free. Freedom is something that you have to do for yourselves. And until the American Negro lets the white man know that we are really, really ready and willing to pay the price that is necessary for freedom, our people will always be walking around here second-class citizens, or what you call 20th century slaves. The price of freedom is death. Let us remember that we are not brutalized because we're Baptists. We're not brutalized because we're Methodists. We're not brutalized because we're Muslims. We're not brutalized because we're Catholics. We're brutalized because we are black people in America. I mean that shit, because these folks see us as thugs. I don't care whatever the fuck you think you are. We thugs the niggas to these motherfuckers. I was marked from the get up. The best thing is very simple. If you have different belief systems, different religions, mm. you need to open up, open up your heart and, uh, and, and realize that we're all here together mm. and respect each other's mm. beliefs as best as possible. Mm. Um, understand that we, we, share, we, share a common, we share a common ancestry, not um, just here, but our whole galaxy. Trust me when I tell you that shit. Because uh, all religions are good. I wrote something once. It says rivers, lakes, and streams. They all have different names, but they all contain water. So does religions have different names, and they all contain God and the truth, only expressed in different ways, forms, and times. What Jesus taught was good. What Moses taught was right. What Buddha taught was right. What Krishna taught was right. What Isaiah, Lot, Noah. God has always sent prophets to different people at different times with messages for those people. And people have decided to choose those prophets as their leader. Some follow Krishna. Some follow Buddha. Some follow Mohammed. Some follow Jesus. Some follow whoever. But Moses, all of them are right. Jesus made a statement, I come not to destroy no law of the prophet, but to fulfill. All of God's prophets are right. You got to believe in all of them. So, if the person follow Buddha and do what Buddha said, they'll see God and believe it. If a person follow Krishna and live what he preached, he'll be good. If a person follow Moses and live like Moses preached, if they follow Jesus, they follow Lot, any of the prophets. So, I decided to take the Islamic path. The Christian path is a perfect religion if the people practice. And you have two coats, give me one. I'm hungry, you feed me. Love your enemy. Pray for those who use you. Forgive. Give charity. Don't hate. Christianity is a perfect religion. It's the people who don't live the religion. The religion is good, but the people do things in the name of the religion. You call for the same God he calls for. When he's putting a rope around your neck, you call for God, he calls for God. A lot of Muslims do things they shouldn't do. A lot of Protestants, a lot of Buddhists, a lot of Hindus live like they shouldn't live. But the religion itself, the religion is right, but the people who follow religion ain't so right. So I choose to follow the Islamic path because I've never saw so much love. I never saw so many people hugging each other, kissing each other, praying five times a day. The women in the long garments, the way that we eat. You can go to any country and say, Assalamu alaikum, alaikum assalam. You got a home, you got a brother. I chose the Islamic path because it connected me. As a Christian in America, I couldn't go to the white churches. Uh, as a Christian, uh, that was for those people. It did them good. It didn't do me good. Uh, I saw Jesus Christ. I saw a white man with blonde and blue eyes. 
I look at the Lord's Supper in Christianity, I see all white people. You are Asiatic girl. I see a man behind you is dark. All the pictures are of angels are white. Why come we never go to heaven? Why come the Mexican don't go to heaven and fly around? Why the Puerto Rican? Every all the angels happen to be white angels. Somebody told a lie one day. In my search, I heard of the name God. I go to church and they say, God made man of his own likeness and image. If I made a doll in my image, it is quite obvious that the doll must look like me. Yet still, I am faced with the ignorance, lost into fantasy, seeking to find the reality in what they taught me of this illusion of God. So everything, the greatest so far has yeah. been white and, and these are just falsehoods, uh, so white supremacists. Everything was white. Tarzan, the king of the jungles, he was white. Uh, black was always bad. What you mean you was marked? Not just racially marked, not just class marked, not just marked as a countrified, rural, niggerized human being. I was raised in the society of poverty, where I saw the innocent being humiliated daily, dying for being poor. So poverty was a part of the crime in our society told he's less beautiful less moral and less intelligent he was marked because he wasn't sure that he really belonged here at all they made everything black ugly and evil look in your dictionary and see the synonyms of the word black it's always something degrading and low and sinister look at the word white it's always something pure high and clean Then they started to teach me of the devil, and the Satan, and the hell. They teach me of the Christians, but they make sure they teach me that Jesus, the Son of God, is a white man. The Bible, you know the Bible? Let me say that King James edit the Bible. Now, my understanding is that King James edited the Bible, I don't think he will edit it for the benefit of black people. We don't have anything to be ashamed of. So the only thing that made me feel good, the only thing that made me feel free, that connected me with Saudi Arabia, the Islamic religion, connected me with Pakistan, Morocco, Syria, people of these nations have welcomed me as a brother and I'm a citizen and now in America I'm respected by all colors and throughout the world as a Muslim. See the name Mohammed is the most common name in the world. There are more Mohammeds on the planet. There are four billion people on earth and every third person is a Muslim. So for me, I'm not condemning no other religion, but for me, being a world figure, John taking the name Muhammad Ali, which is the name of my people for the birth of America, accepting the Islamic religion, it was better for me. Where another person, Shintoism, Buddhism, uh, 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 Christianity, Baptist, Catholic, Protestant, Jewish, that might fit another man. But you can choose any religion you want. If you believe it, you'll see God because all of them are good. So I chose the Islamic religion. That's why I chose it. Muhammad. We believe in a quest for truth and justice. The indigenous peoples, brown, red. People think there's only a few Indians left. There's millions of them in the whole continent of America, which includes South America. And one day they're going to be asking for their rights. I wouldn't be surprised if they weren't standing next to the black people too. So it's either give now or die later, I reckon. Be ready to be unsettled. We're going to have a serious conversation here. But yes, we're going to be critical too. There's no doubt about that. Despite the fact that I saw that Islam was a religion of brotherhood, I also had to face reality. 
And when I get back into this American society, I'm not in a society that practices brotherhood. I'm in a society that might preach it on Sunday, but they don't practice it on any day. And so since I could see that America itself is a society controlled primarily by racists. Yeah, race has everything in the world to do with it.